This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is The Ramsey Show. It's a show about your work. It's a show about your money. It's a show about your relationships, your life, and you. We're going to talk about you right in front of you. Ken Coleman is with me as my co-host today here on the air, as we'll be particularly taking your calls about work, because that's what Ken takes every day on The Ken Coleman Show. His best-selling book, From Paycheck to Purpose, is out there to help you do just that. Welcome back, Ken. Good to be back. Happy New Year. Your first time on the show this year. Yeah, yeah. Fun times. Always good to be back. And it's book launch week. I'm pumped. Well, you should be. I haven't you been be. excited about a book launch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, everybody knows. I'm always what excited you mean. about your book launches, Ken. Yeah, but it's and, your book uh, launch. This is a, I'm I haven't news. done a book launch in eight years, so yeah. it's time for me to be excited. How does it comes it out feel? tomorrow. Comes out tomorrow. So midnight tonight, Amazon will start their masterful Santa Claus-like shipping that they do, and uh, Ramsey Solutions uh, shipping team will do the same. So those of you that have bought Baby Steps Millionaires, it is on the way, baby, and uh, that means you got just a few more hours to buy it and get the all the pre-sale stuff included and get the book for twenty dollars and the audio book and the ebook and the audio book of legacy journey and the ebook and so forth and so on and man it's fun it should be it should be been a long time yeah i got a 16 hour day ahead of me tomorrow with media and uh back working like a like I need to or something, and uh, it's good, man. It's good. I'm enjoying it, and yeah. so looking forward to being on the air and talking about this idea of hope because there's just been too many people out there stealing people hope. It's true. Ho- hope stealers, man. They're like dream killers, well, like cousins of dream killers. They're hope stealers. True. The timing of this book is so fantastic because here we come. You know, some people think we've been in a pandemic for two years, some for a year. We're not going to get into that. But the point is, is it changed everybody's view of the future. And here comes a book that's proven decades of proof that you can win with money. You can be a millionaire without inheriting it. There is a process, a clear path. And uh, I think more and more people want to take control of their own lives. They realize the federal government's not going to make them rich, not going to take care of them. I just think it's perfect timing for this. It's exciting to see uh, really a whole new generation grab this information. Uh, I'm I'm jacked about it. I mean, it's a lot of things I have said before, but put together in a yep. way I've never said, I've done put it together before. And when you finish reading the book or your broke brother-in-law with a negative opinion about money finishes reading the book, it makes the case so airtight that you can start from nothing in America and become a millionaire. Yeah. It's airtight. It's airtight. You can do it. I, I know you can do it because I've, I've shown tens of thousands of people how to become millionaires. We've got baby step millionaires everywhere. That's one of the things that inspired me to do this. I thought, you know what? This stuff's working. We ought to tell somebody. And uh, it is working. Yeah. It, it's very, very real. And I just can't stand these people. They're so, I mean, social media has just become a black hole of stupid and it's just like everything you open up on there is just some ninny, some negative, yeah. some lie, something. It's just hate filled everywhere. Yeah. And um, it doesn't matter what you do. It's filled with hate. And, and so I, I'm just saying, you know what? No. Yeah. Good you, for you. You can actually become a millionaire. And I can show you how. Well, maybe maybe you shouldn't be rich. Well, that, it's not a discussion of a moral construct. We can have that discussion otherwise. But – um it's can you get a million dollars legally within a reasonable period of time to provide a the first step of stability to your family and your family tree, the first step in you being able to give outrageously. A million is not a billion, but it's more than most people got. Yep. And so it's something to aim at as your first big wealth building milestone. And we're going to show people it can be done. Yeah. And it is great. By the way, the book cover is fantastic. I got to know. Inquiring minds want to know. You got a lot of people going to get this book in the mail. Did you? Is that really early morning sunshine on the on your head there on the on your left shoulder? <laughs> Did you put that in there? No, Did I'm you that get up angelic. early? Yeah. Is of that? Of course, I have. A, a hair, of course, I have a, a glow coming off of my head. Because when I first about? saw it, Dave, I was you quiet goob. long enough to see if I could hear. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Really. There's an. And, yeah, you can see the halo. You back got there. up early for that. I think. Yeah. It was. It was sunrise on my farm. 
There it is. We went out to my farm at sunrise. I've got a bunch of black fence out there, too, and we shot some leaning up on the black fence, you know, yeah. the obligatory look that didn't just look like a <laughs> Oompa Loompa leaning on a fence. But, um, An Oompa Loompa. But, the, uh, uh, but yeah, we I, we shot. You know how you do a photo shoot? It's like uh, 500 pictures. Yeah. And you most enjoy of, most that of, process. Most of them suck. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> but the, but I was on the farm at sunrise. Which isn't a bad thing. And it's that's gorgeous. That's, that's, that's how they got me out there. Yeah. That's That was the bribe. Yeah. And so I got to be on my farm and hang out and... Um, you know, that's one of the things I like is just having a big old piece of dirt like that that just holds the earth together, and, and I need to own a piece of it. And yeah. that's it's one of my favorite happy places is being out on the farm. So that was perfect for me. But, yeah, I, I just need maybe a little piece of grass hanging yeah. out of my mouth, yeah. a, a yeah. full hayseed, you know, yeah. full hillbilly on. And right? you needed some – I'm sure it's too late to do this but because uh, the audio book is done, but some ambient noises, some crickets in the background, maybe yeah. a little brook, sound of a brook behind you. A cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the occasional <laughs> off in the distance. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, maybe, it's, it's maybe not. Maybe not. But that's not everybody's picture of a millionaire, right? But it's just me hanging out, and it's uh, that's kind of, you know, like real world today. That's, that's how it. I dress every day. That's and it. I don't have on the same shirt today, thank God. That would be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> but um, it's a wonder because I don't really look at my clothes that closely. I should. It upsets the media people. But, yeah, so Baby Steps Millionaire. Today's the last day to get it on pre-sale. If you order it right now at RamseySolutions.com, you can get all the goodies that go with it, about $100 worth of stuff. If you wait till tomorrow, the price goes up and all the goodies disappear. And so all the extra add-ons and, and things you can uh, enjoy with it. And, um, hey, thanks to a couple of you posted on Amazon. I flipped over there to see what it was doing on sales. And apparently we had some kind of a, a quality control issue with the audiobook and one of the uh, – a chapter is laid over the other chapter, so I was talking oh. to myself twice on, oh. on one section, and it was you couldn't understand it, and so we figured it out. A couple of people posted about it. Thanks for letting us know, and we fixed it, and it's all all ready to go now. And so the audiobook's rocking as well. A lot of people with audiobooks nowadays. Um, uh, we're seeing those numbers across through the, board. the roof. Through yeah, the roof, it's yeah. it's amazing because people are commuting because the the spawn of podcasting and the popularity of podcasting is make audiobooks more popular. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Well, and audiobooks are are. Honestly, uh, this is a podcast that we're doing right now and a radio show that That's we're right. doing right now. And so audiobooks are actually more thought out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's actual than text. In the, the average podcast. Some yes. of these podcasts I tune into, I'm like, yeah, you guys just kind of sat down and started talking, didn't you? Yeah. You oh, know? yeah. Oh, That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. yeah no forethought at all. So uh, no, no game plan at all. So do, do check us out, folks. We appreciate you being there. And we appreciate the number of you that have already bought the book. It's uh, sold. Um, <laughs> about a hundred thousand copies already before we even started and so thank you it's a bestseller i'm sure as a result but you guys do that for us and we appreciate you and uh here's the thing if you want to believe or you know somebody that needs to believe that starting from nothing you can still actually build wealth in america today i make an airtight case you can't walk away from this evidence stories actual arithmetic the largest study of millionaires ever done in the back of the book don't miss it it's called baby steps millionaires it comes out tomorrow and if you pre-order today at ramseysolutions.com you're gonna get the best deal ever this is the ramsey show If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your work, your money, your relationships, and you, right here on The Ramsey Show. Dennis is in New York City. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Good. Uh, hi, Dave and Ken. <clears throat> um, so I, my question is, I have a union pension, right, which will give me 50% of my base salary when I retire. Currently, I have 400000 in my 401k. Um, and I'm just wondering, so I'm running through the baby steps. Once I get my uh, emergency fund, if I should just attack the mortgage instead of starting up the 401k again? No, I'd start it up. Put 15% in there. That's something you can control. You're doing really well, though. I mean, goodness gracious, you're in great shape. How much do you owe on your mortgage? Uh, about 220 Okay. What's your household income? Uh... This year is just under two hundred. Okay, so we put thirty thousand or so into four hundred one k's and uh, Roth IRAs and so forth, and then we attack the mortgage with the rest of it. You'll probably don't be done with the mortgage in under five years. How old are you? Thirty-eight. Oh wow, yeah, you'll be great. You'll be in good shape. What you're going to want to do then, when you get to baby step seven, is you may actually crank back on the 401k at that point and start doing some side investing. We call it bridge investing, money you can get to before you're 59 and a half, some mutual funds or some paid for real estate or something like that that you can get to because you're not going to be able to touch your pension or your, well, I don't know how your pension is set up, but um, it may you may be able to touch it because you may have had 20 years in or something. But um, yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have some extra money that's non-retirement saved as well as we go along. Linda is in Charlotte. Hi, Linda. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Good afternoon. It's an honor to talk with you. You too. What's up? Um, I have questions. I'm going to be 68 this summer. My husband is 61. We're both going to retire the end of March. Fun. I have two mortgages. Oh, thank you. Two mortgages. Um, I owe five, or I have a house worth 580000 I owe 199000 on it. I have a home in Florida worth 480000 and I owe 59000 on it. My plan to be debt-free when we retire is to sell North Carolina and pay that small loan off in Florida. My question is, we have family in Ohio. Um, should we buy a small place in Ohio, a piece of real estate that we can go back and forth with, or should we take the profit from North Carolina and invest it. Hmm. Okay, so you're going to have the Florida house is going to be your main place when you sell the Charlotte house, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, how much you got in your investment accounts? My retirement, my husband and I, we have about $800,000. Way to go. Way to go. Thank you're you. millionaires. You did it. Yes. Proud of you. Our net worth is 1.8 with good, our nice. properties. Very good. I have a quick question, Dave. I don't know if it'll inform your, your opinion here. Who is the family in Ohio? Who, who are the family members? Um, my granddaughter will be in her senior year. I'd like to go to her cross-country events. Um, I have two sons in, in Ohio. My daughter lives here in North Carolina. Okay, but the Ohio, the Ohio property would there. be for the two sons to see them. Yes, my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Okay, what would you spend on that? Under three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And pay cash, of course. Cash, yes. Yeah, yeah get a little condo or something. That'd be all right. Mm -hmm. I did that. I bought a condo in Knoxville when my kids were in college there just to have a place to hang out. Mm -hmm. We didn't use it enough yeah. really to justify it. And you probably won't use this enough to justify it. But your stuff is okay. there and your clothes are there and you don't even have to pack a suitcase. You can just throw some stuff in a backpack and go because you got enough stuff yeah. there to live on when you go in to see the yeah. grandkids and you don't have to worry about hotels or debit cards or anything else or availability or dealing with you know, VRBO or yeah, all that kind of stuff. You just move in and you've got the money. I really wouldn't spend much more than that. Just get a little condo, something you don't okay. have any maintenance trouble with. Let someone else do the maintenance okay. on it. Puts, you know, furnish it reasonably where you can enjoy mm -hmm. it when you're there. And, and then do stock it with personal items and with uh, clothing so you don't have to haul that back and forth. It took me a while with our second homes to learn to do that. Okay. We always took a suitcase like we were going to somebody else's house, which is mm -hmm. stupid. 
I mean, you got enough old mm-hmm. clothes and yeah. stuff to put around there and enough, you know, just make sure you got your own everything in there so you don't duplicate everything. So you don't have to uh, do that. Phone chargers, okay. all that kind of stuff. So you just don't have to think about it. That way you're not, quote, okay. packing to go on a trip. You're just switching houses. And Right. Yeah. Okay, so my Social Security take-home will be a little over 2000 Living in Florida alone, we could probably live on that 2000 because we are very frugal, and um, I wouldn't. my other question... I wouldn't. I would okay. spend more than that. Well, well, how do I know how much I can take out of my investment? Oh, I don't think you're going to take too much out. It's not in your being. Okay. I mean, if you make 800000 I mean, if you got 800000 it makes 10%, that's eighty grand. So you pull out fifty grand additional, and you're not going to pull that much out. I probably can't get you to do it. So another couple, no, another I'm couple around two thousand a month. <laughs> yeah, another couple, two or three thousand out of that, and that thing will run forever and ever and ever and ever, and don't worry about it. I mean, just, but you know, don't take out ten thousand a month. If you do, you're going to start chewing into that principal. So, um, but somehow I don't think that's on her list. Yeah, I, I don't hear any uh, classic, caution flags. <laughs> classic millionaire, classic millionaire, the yeah, everyday millionaires. It. We called them with Chris Hogan's that's right. book. But there are people that, um, I don't know that she necessarily followed the baby steps, so I really can't right. call her a baby steps millionaire, but everyday millionaires, these are people started with nothing, inherited nothing, and uh, saved and got their house paid off, and she's got a million eight net worth. They're everywhere, Ken. Yeah. They're all everywhere. The They're all over America, and uh, they defy you uh, people with a political agenda, you hope stealers that say that America is dead and the ability to build wealth in America and have a good life and take control of your own life and those yeah. kinds of things, uh, they defy yeah. your, your, your stupid words. People, her, her very life defies that. Yeah. And so it's beautiful. Beautiful. One, one encouragement, Linda, uh, you, you have lived well. You're, you, you and your husband are men and women of character. You've been smart. You are frugal. Um, I, I like taking Dave's advice here and not take 10000 a month, but take more than the 2000 a month and enjoy that time with the grandkids and your kids. You, you, you've earned this. And so well, there's a, and there's a, it doesn't have to be that tight. Start, start doing some uh, outrageous generosity. Yeah, too. live some. You need that. to carry an extra $1,000 in your pocket at all times yeah. just in case you see something that needs to happen in yeah. the world and you can make it happen. Yeah. Uh, random acts of kindness and those kinds of things. And you're in a position to do that. You yeah. live like no one else so that later you can live and yeah. give like no one else. Now, I don't suggest people impulse a $100,000 gift. No. But a $1,000 gift when you got a million eight is a good impulse. You know, Rachel has really resonated with our audience with something she says over and over again. And she's talking about giving people permission to spend. That's what we talk about with the budget. And I think, Linda, if you guys put a really good budget together, use our every dollar budget and put a retirement budget together and go, wait a second, that's, I have permission to spend. That's got some room in it for yes. a nice restaurant. Yes. You know, it's got some room in it for whatever. And 2000 bucks in Florida <laughs> doesn't have that. So you need to loosen up, it, loosen up the bit. old... Uh, the old purse strings are a little bit and yeah. have, have a little enjoyment. Enjoying money without overdoing it is a sign of maturity. Yeah. And it's not age maturity. It's emotional maturity. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people like her and uh, or they've been through what we've been through. Sharon has that tendency when you go broke to not ever spend again. Yeah. You're just going to hold on tightly and yep. just be super frugal. And that'll get you to a certain point. But you're also po- also supposed to enjoy money. Now, some of you that overspend out there, you spend like you're in Congress, you don't have any issue with this enjoying money thing. You enjoy other people's money called debt. Uh, you enjoy everything. That's not. We're not talking to you. We're talking to the frugal who need to be more generous and enjoy their money. You need to and you need to do all of those things at the same time. And it's very possible to do it all. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. 
you could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. America right here in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Eric and Alyssa are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Doing great. Welcome. Where do you guys live? We are from Gilbert, Arizona. Oh, fun, fun. The Phoenix area. Yes, just outside of Phoenix. Wonderful. Good to have you guys. All the way to Nashville to do a debt-free scream. How much have you paid off? Dave, we paid off $116,000. All right. How long did that take? A little over eight years. Wow. All right. And your range of income during that time? Uh, 57000 to about 130000 Nice jump. What do you all do for a living? I stay home and take care of these three kiddos over here. Mm-hmm. And I was in ministry for a long time, but I started my own business at the beginning of 2021. Wow. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you do? What kind of a business? I run a communications business. So I do a lot of freelance writing, editing, uh, digital strategy, those sorts of things. That's a good move for somebody from the pastorate, from the ministry. Very nice move. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, what was your good position? Good use in of ministry? words. Uh, I was a youth minister. Oh, okay. Ah, good. Very good. <laughs> well, congratulations, you guys. All right, so the vast majority of this time, you made 57. Uh, in there, 57 to about 75, yeah. you know, 80. But then the jump came when you, uh, the big jump came when you started the business. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Correct. Very cool. So what kind of debt was the 116000 This Dave, was we paid off our, our house. house. Woo! <laughs> Looking at weird people. I love it. What's this house worth? Uh, about 500000 You know, Phoenix mom, market's a little volatile, but, you know, it's about 500000 or so. Very nice. Nice. Very nice. Very cool. So what was the, what church were you a youth pastor in? Uh, at St. Patrick's Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. Very good. Good. Very cool, <laughs> man. What made you guys decide to take this journey eight years ago? Well, it started a little before that even. We were both working in youth ministry back in 2008, and I was making a whopping $35,000, and he was making less than thirty. And I had started dating this guy, and I knew he had no debt, and he had a savings account, Ooh. which like blew my mind because yeah. we worked in ministry. So I walked into a co-worker, um, Trish's office, and she had the Total Money Makeover on her bookshelf. And I was going on a flight. I was like, hey, can I borrow that book? She's like, sure. I've never read it. I was like, great. <laughs> so I grabbed it and I didn't even know how much debt I personally had at this time. Come to find out I had $27,000 worth of debt and I r- tore through the book. And as soon as I was done the- with the book, I was like, I need to get rid of this debt. So over the next two years, um, we finally got engaged and then married. But over those two years, I was able to churn through that $27,000 of debt. Wow. And then we got married. Um, and joined our life together debt-free, and we went on an all-inclusive trip to Costa Rica for our yeah. honeymoon. And I had kept telling him, we need to budget, we need to budget, we need to budget. He's like, why budget? I take care of my money just fine. So, so Dave, I'm uh, maybe ashamed and excited to say that I actually read Total Money Makeover on my honeymoon, sitting poolside in Costa Rica <laughs> with a pina colada in my hand. <laughs> There's so much wrong with this picture. The looks <laughs> we got from people, oh, they're probably like, this poor couple has no money. Oh. Yeah, they're too broke to be here. Yes, too broke. They they're reading don't that, belong that here. Dave book. They must not have any money. I love it. And that we, begins everything. That began everything. We got home. We did our first budget a couple of days after our honeymoon. It took us about six hours to do our first budget. Of course. But uh, we nailed through it, and our big goal at the time was to buy, uh, put as much down as possible on a house. We wanted to do at least 20%, but we thought if we could get to 40 or 50%, we'd be in good shape. We ended up doing about 40% uh, down on our house about a year and a half later. We used one of your ELPs named Ed Surchik in the Phoenix area, who's fantastic. And um, and that just started the, the ball rolling. And um, we... Um, 
we we did a 15 year fixed rate mortgage and then um as excited as it was and we were doing everything right we did have some storms come into our life yeah in 2013 we had one child and then um, we found out we were newly expecting our second and we were thrilled and over the moon again we're doing everything right no debt no nothing and um about 15 weeks into the pregnancy we realized something was very wrong with me and something was also very wrong with our baby um and so at 18 weeks i delivered our son Gabriel Joseph and um, and I nearly died as well during it so here we are grieving the loss of a child and then two months later we lose Eric's aunt who passed away very unexpectedly and like three days after he comes back from the funeral we find out um, he no longer has a job so he is out of we're grieving a loss losing family members we have no income and then Eric just starts to grind. Um, He is going to our church every day to pray for an hour in the morning. Then he's going to the library to do freelance work, to look for jobs. Um, At one point, he flower shops, they pay for delivery drivers. Um, He went to a local flower shop and he knew he could get paid $5 per delivery. And if he did six an hour, that's 30 bucks an hour. So he delivered flowers for Valentine's Day for three days and that paid for our groceries that month. Mm. And then we sold gold jewelry that like things, nothing sentimental, uh, like kitchen stuff around, you know, we just sold anything. And wow. then as he's at the library every day, I got the mail one day and I have a letter and it says all of our insurance claims for the delivery and loss of our son were denied. So we have $43,000 in medical bills that we are on the hook for now. We have no job. It was it was horrible. So, but the good news was a couple months later, I ended up getting a job that was actually higher paying than the previous one, which was excellent. And um, when these medical bills came in, you know, you have a book that you recommend called The Go Getter, mm-hmm. um, and I'd read that book. And I um, can tell. <laughs> and yeah. so that book, um, they talk all about how um, this it's a fable and this guy goes and he, he j- just grinds and he runs into all these obstacles, but he just keeps going because he's just trying to achieve this thing. And so um, I had read that too. And so I got on the phone with every single medical provider. We had tons of bills. And if it was ten ten about $10 or $10,000, Dave, we called them all up and I negotiated every single one. Um, and every single one of them was able to give us some kind of, a, sometimes it was 10%, sometimes it was 40%, but we knocked off all that medical debt and thankfully we had some savings emergency fund things like that that we um, knew we could tap into if we needed to and we were able to pay those medical bills off without an actually we don't even consider it part of our debt wow. um, because we never even actually had to use our emergency fund and never even had to take unemployment. Um, and so much of that is a testament to this to this program. Well, uh, real quick, because I, I want people to hear this. This ha- this massive storm happens after the commitment after yeah. the to, commitment. to, to yes. do a 15 year mortgage, to pay it off, never have debt, serious budgeting. I just have to believe, what would you say to people, the uh, the power of the budget and the power of the discipline before the storm helped you not panic in the storm? Is that true? The, the, but having a plan in front of our, in front of us that we knew we could execute and the fact that we'd already been doing it together for several years, um, gave us the confidence to know that we can make it through that storm. It was a true cornerstone of our marriage, faith, Mm -hmm. finances, our relationship. Mm -hmm. That's that's what well, that's beautiful. our family's built on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys are amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there's just a whole many different ways you can react to a crisis. And uh, this guy's buffalo, man. He runs right straight in the storm. Yeah, I was thinking, instead of getting scared, you got busy. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't really have Real time busy. to be well, he scared. He got scared, so he got busy. But yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. There wasn't much time to focus on fear after you started doing everything you were doing. You know, I was driving wow. home. Exactly. I was driving home um, on my last time doing one of those flower deliveries at Valentine's Day. And here I was. I was working a great job that I loved. And tears were filling up my eyes for two reasons. One, I was sad because I was doing this. And I was like, I just don't want to do this. This isn't what a man should be doing. And at the same time, tears of joy because I knew I was doing it for my wife. And at the time, That's exactly my what a man son. should be yeah. doing. Way Love to go, it. dude. Yeah. All right, get the kiddos in. What are their names and ages? We We've got have Kel- Kellen, who is nine, Nolan is six, and Clara Joy is four. <laughs> All right. I love it. All right, Eric and Alyssa and the team. Phoenix, Arizona, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you and a copy of Total Money Makeover for you. You're going to be Baby Steps Millionaires before you know it. House and everything are paid off. They're weird people. 116000 paid off in eight years. What a story, man. 57 to 130. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Ready? Three, two, one. We're debt free! Well done. This is how it's done. 
baby. <laughs> the house is paid for. How weird does it feel to be that young and not have a payment in the world? Oh, love it. This is The Ramsey Show. launch week for the baby steps millionaires book it officially hits the street tomorrow and you can get it this thursday night george camel rachel cruz and i will be doing a live event called building wealth in 2022 now we're not going to be able to see you in person because there were only 1600 tickets and they sold in about a half a second and live events these days are really popular but guess what we are going to live stream this event completely free live on thursday night this coming thursday january the 13th and you can watch it free over a hundred thousand people have already signed up to watch the live stream in addition to the 1600 in the room gonna be a big deal building wealth doesn't that sound kind of fun building wealth in 2022 yeah, it does sound fun. We're going to walk you through exactly how to do it for real and the things to watch for, the signs to watch for when you're about to get uh, messed up, you're about to get screwed over, you're about to step in a trap of your own making. Uh, we can show you that as well. RamseySolutions.com slash wealth to register. You do have to register, but it is free. Building wealth in 2022. RamseySolutions.com slash wealth. Don't miss out. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your life and your money. Benjamin is in Knoxville. Hey, Benjamin, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Thanks for having me. Sure, man. What's up? Um, well, I'm my wife and I are actually getting real close to hitting that millionaire mark. And, um, well, our first question, which it kind of sounds like I need to be on the live stream Thursday, is... What do we do with the extra money now that we've paid everything off? Um, and then the other one more is I sort of like my job, but I don't have a lot of control over it. And I was wanting to kind of figure out how to get a direction to go into business for myself and do that with a good plan to get more control and fulfillment. So, All right. So uh, let's, let's take the idea creation question on here. So how do we come up with ideas? For somebody like you who wants to work for himself, the first thing is is the context that you have to begin to look for business possibilities within these two questions. What problem do I want to solve or what desire do I want to fulfill? So businesses, Benjamin, at the end of the day, they either solve a problem through a product or a service or they fulfill a desire. So simple examples, solving a problem, uh, fixing uh, networking or, or technology issues, okay? Or uh, selling shoes or uh, making uh, women feel beautiful with makeup. If a woman wants to start a business in hair or makeup or whatever, so one is solving a problem. The other is meeting a desire or fulfilling a desire. So we start with that premise. And so you need to ask yourself, who are the people I most want to help? When you allow yourself just to think, and you have to take yourself to a place where I don't have to work for anybody else. And if I was paying myself, what problems would I want to solve or what desires what I want to fulfill. And you begin to attach that to people. And so you have history in your life. You have experience and environment uh, in your adult life. And begin to think of those types of people and problems or desires. And then when you get there, you go, okay, what are the solutions to those problems or solutions to those desires that I connect with? This is about the ideation part. And, and then Benjamin, once you begin to see that, you go, okay, uh, what would business look like? Then you have to do more research. So those are just the 
idea phase. And I'm quickly walking you through a framework that will allow you to begin to not just generate ideas, but then test the idea. So then you look at, okay, um, what what are viable business models uh, that other people have done? We want to see, is there a track record here? Um, and then you want to look at talent. What you do best, because as an entrepreneur, at some point when you launch this thing, you're the chief everything officer, as Dave has said so many times in our entree leadership events. And so initially, you're going to be doing a lot of things yourself. And so you want to mitigate uh, you doing as much of, uh, much of uh, excuse me, as little as possible of things that you're awful at. So as the entrepreneur, even as the chief everything officer, you're going to think about who am I going to have to pay to help me launch this to do things that, quite frankly, I suck at, because I only want to focus on things that I'm decent at, average at, or better as I launch this. So that's just a quick little framework for you as you come up with ideas and then begin to vet the ideas. You had something already pop into your mind, hadn't you? For sure. Well, yes and no. So the problem is I'm in sales right now, so I'm good at increasing top line. I've been in engineering and I'm good at making things run better. And the problem is every business does that. So I don't really know what business to attach to. (laughs) What problems do you get excited about solving you personally in a business framework? Um, it's probably making the deals and bringing in top line. Yeah. The art of the deal. Yeah, Yeah, that's good. Okay. So marketing. So what product or service could you personally get extra excited about selling? See, you're already a good sales guy. I mean, you love the art of the deal. You love closing the deal, bringing a solution to somebody. But now you personalize this. What would you get absolutely rabid excited about selling? If you don't well, know, I really that, like cars and motorcycles and stuff. So, oh, there you might go. Be something to attach with that. All right, All right. now we're getting some clues here. And we're an engineer, yeah. so maybe you uh, do, you know, open a custom shop. Could work. Yeah, that could work. And because there's probably a few guys around Knoxville and turn a wrench and help you with that. And uh, you could right. do, you could do some design work and bring in the business both close the deal. And each one of those deals are higher end ticket items. As you aren't. A custom shop for motorcycles or for auto, you know, uh, you know whether it's frame up custom or redos or whatever. I mean, there's a whole different world there yeah. that's um, money wise. That that is um, per per unit of of sale would be ridiculous yeah. potentially. But um, but you know, you'd be using your engineering hat to uh, work on the some of the design, uh, maybe even some of the implementation, but certainly on the sale. Yeah. And I just made that up. I have no idea. But well, I don't know what else you do with cars off the top of my head. But, yeah, but um, that's actually the exercise, Dave, right there. You take an idea and you go, okay, what are real lines of revenue? Not fantasy land, like real businesses. And so the next step is he's going to go meet somebody who's in that business and go, hey, could I, is there a mutual connection where you could get a phone call or a cup of coffee and go, hey, talk to me about the business. Yeah. Give me the highs. Give me the lows. What's the margin? Is it a high margin? How volatile is it? Because some of that stuff can be volatile, mm-hmm. but it can also mm-hmm. be very high margin. Very cool. Good stuff, man. Thanks, Benjamin. Congratulations on everyday millionaire status. Uh, Trevor's with us in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, Trevor. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my wife and I are in Babysit 3B, and we're saving up 20% towards our down payment for our house. Good. So my question is more out of curiosity. Why is the 0% home, 0% down home mortgage a bad idea? Well, there are only two. Uh, there is the VA loan, which is a more expensive loan, is why it's a bad idea. Uh, the interest rate's slightly higher, and the funding fees and so forth on the front end are higher. Um, and so it's just not a, it's just not a good loan. Uh, the second one is a first-time homebuyer loan of some kind that has nothing down. And most of those have restrictions on them on resale or recouping upon resale or something else. And so uh, the vast majority of the time, you're giving up something for the fact that you're not putting a down payment in. Uh, and thirdly, I would just add that, um, that there's something about you doing a deal where you're putting a down payment that you're just making a wiser choice. You don't feel as it's just easy to spend other people's mo- easier to spend other people's money called borrowing than it is to spend your own. Uh, kind of juxtapose it, Trevor, all the way over to say, what if you saved up an, uh, $200,000 and you're going to pay cash? You make a different purchase when you spend $200,000 out of your savings account because the way your brain works, because there's pain involved in that, that hurts. It's like, ah, 
I just cleaned out 200 grand. Yeah, so you get real careful about your purchase, real wise about your purchase versus nothing down. It doesn't cost me anything. I'm just signing, and you get almost flippant, and you almost impulse all the way over on the other side of the spectrum into it when you're spending other people's money. And the down payment or the large down payments in between those two things, it at least makes you concentrate because you got skin in the game. Yeah, and, and you're getting ahead financially. Let's, let's not yeah, forget yeah. that. The you're whole idea is ahead. we're trying to get out of debt. And when you take on a mortgage on a 15-year, you still have a game plan to knock it out and be debt-free, house and everything very soon, anyway. That's what you do. This is The Ramsey Show. Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. It's the Ramsey Show. Thanks for being with us, America. I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I'm going to wander through <laughs> this hour. Ken Coleman, my Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. As we talk about your work, we talk about your money, we talk about your relationships, we talk about your life. Open phones here at 888 825 Dylan is with us in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hi, Dylan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, good afternoon, Dave and Ken. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve, brother. What's up? Hey, Dave, I hope you know what you're talking about because we're coming to you for some Papa Dave advice. Well, I'm an expert on my opinion, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife and I are, I would call it having a healthy disagreement on whether or not we should be investing in a financial advisor right now. Okay. You have any financial? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, right now, we're on baby steps four, five, and six. Good. Uh, we've got about two hundred and fifty thousand in retirement investments. Okay. What would be wrong with having a Smart Investor Pro in your corner? Well, the the argument um, from my wife is we've gotten to this point uh, where, and she's having a hard time committing to paying somebody else to, um, you know, walk alongside us, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, when I was broke and uh, didn't have a whole lot to worry about, I could do a will with an online will company. Uh, when I've got several hundred million dollars, I need a lawyer. The scale means you need high, greater areas of expertise. Okay. If you want to, if you want to tinker under the hood on, on a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Lamborghini, you probably shouldn't do that unless you're certified to do that. But if you want to turn a wrench on a on your thousand dollar beater, go ahead. Good luck. No problems. You're you're more dealing with a Lamborghini now. You need somebody to walk beside you. Now you don't need to pay them a ton. Uh, Smartvestor pros get paid based on the balance. If you're doing a managed account, or they get paid based on what you buy. Either one is okay. Um, but I have a smart investor pro in my corner and everybody asks my opinion. But when I get ready to do investing or Sharon gets ready, you know, we're getting ready to change some of our investments around. Sharon's involved. Uh, the smart investor pros there and we talk it through and we go, okay, what are we going to do? And why are we doing this? And, 
Uh, they're not there to tell us what to do. They're telling us what we could do and why, and we learn a little bit from them about what's happening in the market, what's happening with that particular fund, and the knowledge base that they have that we don't have because they're in it every day. We learn from, and then based on that, we make our own decisions. So the fact that you stand on your own, make your own decisions from before, you keep that part, but you just get an advisor in your corner to give to teach you. Yeah, you do need that. Dylan, is it that she's cheap and tight and doesn't want to pay someone, or are there some fears underneath this resistance? Uh, no, I don't think. Um, basically, we're so focused on trying to get the mortgage out of our lives that we're we're trying to do everything we can to, you know, become completely debt free and good. Um, yeah. So it's the money. If there's no fears. The you don't think there's any fear on her behalf, fear of the unknown, of working with a financial pro. You think it's just she's watching every nickel and doesn't want to pay a professional something. You think that's the core issue? I, I think so. It's. I think she is comfortable with how we're managing our investments and where we're at in our financial journey right now that she's just having a hard time saying, yep. okay, well, let's, let's pay, a, uh, you know, the extra money for somebody. Well, yeah. I wouldn't pay somebody a flat fee. You yeah. don't need to at this stage. But I would meet with a smart investor pro and let them get paid on the accounts they manage for you. They'll give you advice on the rest of them. And um, here's the thing. If what she's saying is, I don't want people telling me how to handle my money, I agree. I agree with her. But what I do want people to do is to teach me some things I don't know before I handle my money. And uh, that's what your advisor should be doing. That's why we always say you need one with the heart of a teacher, not the heart of a salesman. I do not want people to turn over their money to someone called a wealth manager and walk away and hope they do a good job and pay them $8,000 a year to do it or something. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. We are going to raise our own kids and you're going to handle your own money. But you've got an advisor in your corner and the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And so I've got to have people that know how to do things that I don't know how to do and have knowledge bases that I don't know about to go places I've never been before. Two things I'll give you, Dylan, to help with this conversation. Number one, a conversation doesn't equal commitment. So sit down with several smart investor pros. That's what we tell you to do. And sit down with her and help her understand a conversation with a pro doesn't mean a commitment. Secondly, in that conversation, I think clarity on how it works will give her confidence to move forward. Yeah, the clarity is this is a person to teach us, not to tell us. That's correct. We don't need people instructing us what to do. Uh, we don't need people taking over for us. We're yep. perfectly capable. Yep. Um, I do agree with that. And I, and you can probably get by. I will tell you, 78% of the millionaires that when we did the millionaire study uh, use a, an investment advisor. So there's a correlation between being a millionaire and using an investment advisor. Um, you can call it causal or not causal, but it's there. There is a correlation. Ricardo is with us in Sacramento. Hi, Ricardo. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey there, Dave and team. How are you guys doing? Great, man. What's up? Hey, so I am 24. I am currently on Baby Step 4. I quit my job, which was my first job after graduating college. I just really needed to leave that work environment, but I don't have anything lined up. Um, I'm job searching right now, and i am come across two pathways. I found a job that's very rewarding, but they're going to work me like a dog. Um, it's a 70-hour work week. But like I said, it's very rewarding, and overall the compensation is okay. And the other job involves a lot, a lot of commuting, but the pay is roughly the same. Which way do you think I should go? Well, definitely not the second one because that commuting is going to wear you out in about a week. Uh, the question is the, the job that's going to work you 70 hours is very rewarding. Can you find that somewhere else? And how long will the 70 hours last? Is that a indefinite situation? Yeah, that's an indefinite situation. Are you married? I am not married. You won't be. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say you could do it for a short term, but even single, 70 hours a week, man's not, woman's not created to work like that. And that's going to eventually take its toll. If it had a huge financial upside and it got you out of debt, but you're in baby step four, I would pass. Uh, I love that you found something that's rewarding. So what I would do, Ricardo, is I would focus on what about it feels rewarding to you. Now I'm going to go look for that in this economy. Be patient, young man. You're in great financial shape don't sell out for something that just looks good it's got to be good in all 
aspects. Hold on, we're going to send you a copy of Ken's new book, From Paycheck to Purpose. It's a bestseller. You will uh, love reading it. It'll help you with this exact process. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888-825-5225 it is book launch week here at ramsey and uh, something i've not said for about eight years i have a new book out uh that'll happen tomorrow it comes out it's called baby steps millionaires and uh it's the proven process to show you how to become a millionaire how tens of thousands have uh, the actual byline is how ordinary people built extraordinary wealth and how you can too uh, and uh, we invite you to get a copy today at RamseySolutions.com. That way you get all kinds of goodies thrown in, about $100 worth of stuff. Uh, the ebook, the audio book, the Legacy Journey ebook and audio book, other uh, free things thrown in to make the pre-order at $20 a super good deal. You can wait till tomorrow and pay more for the book and get none of the extras. Either way is okay with us. Whatever you want to do, we're good. We just want you to get the book, but it's not, the, you know, and paper prices have gone up, so book prices have gone up. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew we were going to pass these inflationary costs along to you? Everybody that knows economics knew that, so there you go. Uh, that's how life works. So, Baby Steps Millionaires, check it out. How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and How You Can Too. RamseySolutions.com. The pre-order ends tonight. Tomorrow is the big day. Sacramento is on the line, and that would be Sarah calling. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I was just curious. Um, my husband and I are blessed that we have a relatively high income. Um, paying off the mortgage is obviously a big goal of ours. That's our only debt. Good. And I wondered if, you know, given the higher income, if we should consider saving less than 15% in our retirement and other investing and pile more on the mortgage. Probably doesn't matter because you're probably going to do both so quickly. How big is this big income? Well, it's, I mean, relatively big. It's just, just under 500000 That's big. I'll take it. Yeah. Ken, Ken, you would take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good for you. What do you guys do for a living? Um, I work in public accounting, and he works for the state. He works for the what? The state? For the, for the state. Oh, oh okay. Uh, he's he's the governor. Okay, um, in Sacramento, <laughs> not so, quite, <laughs> not quite, but close enough. Okay, well, we got a great income. Good for y'all. Well done. I'm proud of you. So, uh, how much do y'all own the house? We owe about seven forty. Okay. So the point being, if you save fifteen percent of your income, you're going to pay the house off in about three years. Um, uh, or four years. If you don't save fifteen percent of your income, you're going to pay it off in two or three years. Right. So it doesn't really matter. 
you're young. Okay. How, old, how old are you? I'm 36. Yeah. So, I mean, before you're 40, the house is paid for and you're millionaires anyway. Well, you should be. You make a half a million dollars a year. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you're doing great. Way to go. So, I, what would I do if I woke up in your shoes? I would put 15% of my income away. Because the years, okay. the two or three years that you're paying this house off, you can't go back and get those and shelter that income. But you can shelter it now. Right. You can dump it into a Roth. You can dump it into a, a traditional. And you can keep one way or the other, keep the government's hands off the money. And you can't go back and get those lost years. Uh, and it doesn't affect the timeline of paying off your house, but maybe 12 months. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Because 250 a year for three years, you're done. Right. I mean, that's the numbers I'm doing. I'm doing just big math in my head. I'm not doing some kind of complicated formula here, but good Lord, you all are killing it. You're right. You got a big old shovel and it gives you a lot of options. I would do that just because that, that way I can keep that money going in there and keep the government's hands off of it. That'd be my only motivation is the tax implications of the investments. So pretty cool. Yeah, I, I agree. I would do anything and everything all the time to keep the government's hands off of my money. There you go. There's yeah. too much of the sticky fingers. Well, within, within reason. I mean, I'm not going to go crazy, but shit, yeah, we're, we're going that way yeah. for sure. Good stuff. Tracy's in North Carolina. Hi, Tracy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. How's it going? Great. What's up? Well, I feel like y'all are brothers. I've been listening to you for over 20 years since Debt Free Friday. Wow. So, back in the day. Yeah. So my baby's now 21. So, um, and I just bought your book today. So I'm so, so excited. Cool. Um, to read it. So Thank anyway, you. um, I just kind of, a, um, uh, you're welcome. I have a kind of a bittersweet, um, Question, a good dilemma, bad dilemma, sort of. Um, I'm 51 years old, and I am in baby step seven. However, it's consequently because of a divorce. Mm. Um, it was um, amicable. We did not use a lawyer. I was happy with what I got. He was happy with what he got. But um, what I did was I took um, my portion, and with that, I bought a, um, um, a $300,000 paid-for home. Um, and I also put my um, emergency fund in place of twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and I do have three hundred thousand dollars in my four hundred one k. And so um, that that's the kind of the, the sweet part. Um, I paid a lot of taxes, but because I've been a stay at home mom for twenty one years, I do have an education degree. I now find myself set up with no debt, no payments for the rest of my life. But I'm starting all over again in my career and I'm scared and I'm happy and sad and I can't do my happy little debt free screen because I didn't really do it that way. And so I'm just, I'm just here. I am a baby step seven. And I'm like, I, I don't even have an encore career because I really never had a career. Hey, it's not so, art. It's math. <sighs> I don't care if it's ugly. You're debt free. I'm sorry how you got there too, but you're still there. Yeah. Ugly counts. <laughs> how soon Thank Tracy, you. do you have to start bringing in income? What's your time? Okay, um, great question. Okay, so I will be receiving um, right now, um, and I'm saying it kind of shameful, but re- this all just recently happened. And so sure. right now, I am, I have, um, I'm living off of what he's giving me, and I will get that for two more years. And that's it's only forty thousand a year, but because I don't have any payments, I'm, I'm putting a lot away, and I'm living off of that. But I really want to start working and not have a negative, like, sure. oh my okay. gosh, negative presentation of work. Sure. Oh, or, and I'm very motivated. I'm very ambitious, but I'm scared. And yeah. All, all right. So hold on a second. Let's address the fear first, because I think the fear has got you all discombobulated. The fact of the matter mm-hmm. is, is that you didn't lose whatever talent or skill you had the last time you worked 21 years ago. You have all kinds of experience over that 21 years of of being a homemaker and everything else that is also still there. And so you have to understand that you aren't just this newbie that's walking in with nothing to offer. That's the first thing. I'm just real quick. Just, we we got to have a, a very little bit of time. Just tell me, is there an idea or two that you've had that, that you at least are interested in trying, knowing you don't have to commit the rest of your work life to it? Yes. What I would it? love, honestly, I would love to be back in the classroom, but I, and I, and I'm not, saying this just because I got y'all on the line, but I would love to teach um, your course to children, um, middle school. um, um, But I'd love to get back in the classroom again, but But I mean, I... But what? 
I get afraid thinking of, you know, that I'm new at it again. No, no, and no, no, no. Listen, Tracy, listen to me. Here's the reality. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know the North Carolina numbers, but I know the national numbers. We're seeing record numbers of teachers that are moving on as well uh, for, for the same reasons that a lot of other people are moving on uh, in this great resignation. They are looking for talent all the time to come in the education system. The reality is you have a degree, which means you've got the baseline of qualifications. You need to get out there and start talking to anybody and everybody who knows a school board member, a principal. These are all your friends, family members. You have all kinds of relationships, Tracy, in Wilmington, North Carolina. You are qualified at a base level. Get in the school system and start working, even if you got to be a receptionist at the front desk you, and you make relationships. Wants, I, don't, I know she won't have to, but my point is, is I'm opening it up. Get in the school system, get back in, and then move into it. Yep. That's exactly what you need to do. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the process. And, and, you know, at her age, she's going to be just fine. Hey, thanks for listening. Yeah, appreciate it. This the is The Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Jacob and Jessica are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi. Good. Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Decatur, Illinois. Decatur, Illinois. Awesome. Good to have you guys. All right. How much debt have you paid off? Just over $100,000. All right. Cool. And how long did this take you? 23 months. Good. And your range of income during that time? It was 100 to 150. Good. Very cool. Well, way to go, guys. What kind of debt was the hundred thousand? It's almost all student loans. Yeah. What do you What do you guys do for a living? Um, I'm a speech language pathologist. There's a student loan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also have a degree, but I'm a manufacturing supervisor. Okay. Cool. What's your degree in? Uh, biological sciences. Ah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, Jessica, you're using yours. Yep. Big time. Uh-huh. Big time. Good degree. Mm-hmm. All right. Very well done, guys. Good. Good. So, how long have you been married? Two and a half years. All right. So just after you get home from the honeymoon, you go Mm -hmm. getting out of debt. Exactly. Tell us the story. How'd you connect up with Ramsey and do all this? Yeah. So a little bit of backstory. We were high school sweethearts. And in high school, our principal had our senior class go through Financial Peace University. I like your principal. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. I mean, that's what planted the seed. And so we got to college and we didn't. I mean, we were done. Didn't do it. Yeah. Didn't do it. Right. But shortly after we graduated we got married and as like what you said as soon as we got home from the honeymoon it was like we looked at our minimum payments for our student loans we were paying a minimum of a thousand dollars a month yeah just and we'd be Sally May and of course in yeah. it forever if we had our own bedroom that. in your house yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so you looked at each other newly married and said we're out of here mm-hmm. and you remembered the Ramsey thing from yep. back in the day mm-hmm. okay what'd you do then budget that was our big thing we just had a meeting we talked about okay what do we you drug out the old books or yeah. how'd you do it i was listening to your podcast every day on the oh, way okay. to work and okay yep that gave you the answers the fr- i mean because you got to freshen it after senior year in high school uh-huh. right? it's a little cloudy back there yeah yeah and so you you just the two of you sat down and said okay we're getting rid of this yep yep mm-hmm. we were really really motivated uh not that many people our age do this, so it's kind of hard, but we did have a couple friends. Um, I had a mentor. She was one of my um, supervisors at a, as an SLP, and she was going through the program, and just hearing a few other people our age going through it and the benefits of, you know, getting out of it, we just, we stuck with it. Love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about the psychology. I think a lot of young people listening right now watching this, you knew the principles. Mm-hmm. 
And I didn't hear anything where you thought it was silly, didn't make any sense, but you just went to college. You kind of put off all that adult stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Then you guys get married, come back from the honeymoon, and hello, we see the first student loan payment, and now things are real. Right. Is that the psychology where it's like, oh, we have to start doing this adulting thing? And, and then you were like, okay, this made sense back then. We're going to go get into it. Is that what happened? Yeah. I think it just made us sick to know like yeah. we have to pay that much a month minimum mm -hmm. i mean it's just the, the there's no freedom in that yeah and we both don't like being tied to things and <laughs> i like each other right <laughs> yeah 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 well, that's much, good how much do you think the class helped you realize that it was doable because you said something earlier that i think is interesting you said most people your age couples your age early 20s uh, maybe mid twenties now, but they they don't normally take this stuff on. And you guys were kind of rare birds, which you are. How much do you think that knowledge and that class, knowing that you can do it, helped you get m even more sick? I think it definitely helped. Um, like she said, planted the seed, and so we knew from going through it the first time that it was possible, and that there was a proven way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And so once we plugged back in, we were able to just follow steps and get right to it. Wow, good for you guys. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's still back there. You still, you know, <laughs> it's 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 hovering in the back of your head, and it just has to come to the front. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, guys. Well done. Okay, when people ask how you get out of debt, you tell them budgeting. You said that. What do you think the other keys are? I think it's weathering the storms. I mean, we had two cars break down in the middle of it. I mean, it was like 12 months in, I think, to our debt-free journey. We had two cars break down, and we had been saving for them. Um, but we could have easily, I think, been like, oh, let's get a nicer car or all that. But um, we didn't. We, we weathered the storm. Life's going to get you down. And you can't use that as an excuse to make bad financial decisions. Wow. Woo! That's Woo! real. Preach it! So what, what specifically kept you guys from, from getting a better car? I mean, when the rubber met the road there, what did you decide? What was the real thing that kept you in the game? The determination to finish. Mm-hmm. You had yeah. a bigger picture. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to screw this plan up. I'm finishing. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. Very good, guys. So you said you had cheerleaders. Again, who were they cheering you along? It was, well, it was mostly each other day to day, mm -hmm. but then we had several family members. My um, One of my best friends now, but she was my mentor when I was in SLP. Her and her husband were going through it at the same time as us. Ah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, nothing like a mentor that steps back with you and says, go. Yeah. Love it. Very cool. Well done, you guys. You're heroes. How's it feel to be free? Awesome. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now you can buy a dead gum car, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Save up and get you a decent car. Yeah. Get out of that hoopty. <laughs> I love it. Good for you. Well done. Well done. We've got a copy, copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That is the next chapter in your story for sure. Go on and be millionaires and be outrageously generous and be able to live uh, and change your whole life and family tree. Man, you got a bright future ahead of you. You guys are amazing. Thank so you. good to meet y'all. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone else and disturb them the way that class <laughs> did back in high school for you. I love that story. <laughs> it's good stuff. Well done. I will have to let the, uh, the education solutions team know that this happened. That's absolutely fabulous. Jacob and Jessica from Decatur, Illinois. $100,000 paid off in 23 months, making 100 to 150. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. We're, We're debt free. free. Yeah. 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 This is how it's done. You know, I, uh, James, we need to get uh, Dave Reed's mean tweets back up again one of these days because there's some <laughs> great mean tweets out there on me. And uh, But when we first start doing that, we realized that a percentage of the mean tweets were kids in oh, high school yeah. sitting in the high school curriculum class the foundations class making fun of the old bald guy on the screen and my gym teacher's too lazy to teach so he puts dave ramsey right. up there right yeah or whatever that kind of thing and that the kids just railing on it it's yeah. it's hilarious and they're so mean oh, it's yeah. exactly what i would have been doing uh, right if I, you would have been worse 
all day. Because yeah. you and me together don't have a thought. Yeah. I mean, ADD, no. I mean, we yeah. got it nailed down. I man. would have had my phone it's confiscated. Like uh, yeah, my, oh, my phone. You know what we need to do going forward? This pa- is a Passing sh- notes. They don't do that anymore because no. they don't have to. No, they text. They text, yeah. I never you thought You know what we need to do for future editions? In fact, we, we should put this on the docket, folks. This is real time. Hitting Dave with a business idea. This could go sideways quick. I think we should film you. Every once in a while, just these break-ins, like you're doing your normal teaching on the curriculum, but then it cuts away to you going, hey, stop saying mean stuff. You could be in algebra, you idiot. Or you know how you go, shut up. It's your classic, shut up, when you're on stage. Like you could be doing push-ups right now. Shut up, you know? Because it's like, why are Wake they so up. angry? Why? How did you know I was leaving? Yeah, hey, they're he, so angry. You can see me. You can see me. Well, I was angry. I mean, you're just, well, you're not angry. You're just sarcastic. Oh, of course. You're just a little punk. Oh, and yeah. I was a little punk. I would have, man, I completely would have been trashing me. Oh, sure. If I was in high school and right. they put up Dave Ramsey on the high school screen. Yeah. And, uh, but here's what happens. If you, you know, if you go through D.A.R.E., yep. you know, remember the old D.A.R.E. program? Oh, Don't do course. drugs, right? Oh, thanks to Nancy Then Reagan. you go off to college and you do drugs. <laughs> then you remember... That dare taught you not to do drugs after that. You remember that? That's uh, well, kind of the same thing, right? I, Went through I Financial Peace I University in school. Well, you were a good Christian kid. I was kid. a good boy. Yeah. I promise. And, you know, you go through <laughs> Financial Peace University in high school, and then you go off to college and you get into debt. That's it. And then when you get married yeah. and you want to be free, you come yeah. out and you do your debt-free scream, yeah. and we still love you. So you put up with the mean tweets for this kind of an exactly. outcome. Exactly. It's this perfect. is the outcome I want right yeah. here. It's worth it. it I, if you have to go on a circuitous route to get there, you still get there. I'm in. This is the Ramsey Show. personality number one best-selling author of the book paycheck to purpose is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your work your relationships your money and your life this is the ramsey show james is in portland maine hi james welcome to the ramsey show thanks dave i'm calling to get your opinion on whether to quit my two hundred thousand dollar a year remote finance manager job in order to homeschool my two daughters and work toward changing my career. I'm 39 and I'm married to a doctor who makes $300,000 a year. Uh, We are debt free other than our $380,000 mortgage on a home worth uh, approximately $650,000. We have a six month emergency fund, $350,000 in 401k and $50,000 in college funds so far. Wow. How old are you guys? I'm 39. My wife is 34. Phenomenal. Pretty incredible situation you've gotten yourself into. Well done. Gives you a lot of choices, doesn't it? Yeah. Another wrinkle I wanted to share is that my wife's specialty has very odd hours on evenings and weekends. So given my eight to five schedule, we often end up like ships passing the night. So another feature of this decision, potential decision would be that I'd get to spend a significant more, you know, significantly more time with her. You're eight to five remote. I'm eight to five remote. So I work with people throughout the country, um, and to have meetings with them and things like that. I, I work those hours. Yeah. In finance. Yeah. So finance is in, I am a back end finance uh, person for a consulting firm. Oh, okay. So these are corporate meetings, not consumer meetings. I got you. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Very cool. What would the side hustle be? Uh, well, that's something I want to develop. I have a background in you know, kind of creating some content and things like that. So I was kind of thinking that might be something I want to do part-time. Again, I don't, I, it would be like 15, 20 hours a week 
rather than mm-hmm. a significant amount of time because I would want to focus on the homeschooling. Okay. Well, number one, uh, financially, you can just quit and homeschool, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you got $300,000 of your income and you're just stay at home debt, right? That's not a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, financially, mathematically, you can do that. Um, but math isn't giving, isn't what's giving me a pause here. Um, what's giving me a pause is you're going from working full time to not at all. Um, and I think you have an, uh, uh, maybe there's parts of this picture that you've painted that are more beautiful than they are when you start doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing that it gives me a little bit of pause is there's a part of this and it says you have the ability to bring two hundred thousand dollars to your family regardless of what your wife works or makes Mm -hmm. to manage that ability poorly and just quote flip the switch and walk away today feels uh irresponsible there's a part of me that wants to say that So I think that Mm -hmm. that ability to create that much income, that much value for your family, the transition from that should be managed very carefully and deliberately to minimize how much of your earning potential is lost. Um, And because I'm not positive that 15 hours is actually the actual limiting factor. For instance, if you were doing some kind of financial analysis that you could do uh, when the kids are asleep, or at times that your wife is at work and the kids are asleep or whatever, where, where we're not ships passing in the night, where you're not, uh, where you work around the homeschool thing, you might still get in 40 hours pretty easily if you just had a more flexible environment as an example. So I don't know, Ken. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. James, what's driving this? And there's no wrong answer, but what's driving it? Is it the kids being homeschooled? Is it you coming home to uh, take a break for a season and get the benefit of being around the kids and the wife? I mean, what's really driving this? The homeschooling is definitely part of it. I mean, when we saw that they're putting kindergartners on iPads, we really didn't like that idea. So we moved to a place that had, quote unquote, great schools. And then we saw that and we were not thrilled with that. The idea we were, how do you go back to books after having an iPad. It was my question. And so we were really concerned about that. So that was one of the main drivers. The ship's passing the night's another one of them. And the other is I went and looked up what the top paying career was at the time that I was, you know, when I was in college and I chose finance, it isn't necessarily my passion either. So it's kind of, I do feel a little bit like I'm running away from something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, to to speak to what you were saying, Dave, but at the same time, I, feel like given the freedom that I do have, should I be running away towards something that I'd like to do more? Well, the answer is, well, the answer is unequivocally yes, but what Dave is saying, and I agree with Dave, let's let's not just bolt right away. Let's think of a strategy, you know, the idea of a bridge. I, I just like using that analogy. What's the bridge to take me from where I am to where I want to be? And I think you got three factors here. Two of the three, uh, by the way, all legitimate, and, and I just wanted to know what was behind this, because two of the three are family and relational. And because you've got the financial wherewithal to do it, uh, I, I, I'm fine with it. I don't have red flags hearing those three answers, but I do have a red flag on, do you really know how you're going to do as homeschool dad? Because that's tough. I think you'll have a more satisfying end to this story, a more richness of soul, if you find a way to create something that you earn in the marketplace yep. that's different than what you're doing. Yep. It may or may not be finance-related, and it, it, but it certainly doesn't necessarily have to be 15 hours. Uh, you, there's lots of hours in the week that, um, that people do lots of things that are complete wastes of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, I think you will like your life better, yourself better, if you are uh, somehow being a better steward of your capacity. And it's not to say being a homeschooled dad is not a good steward of it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you're jumping from a high-performance situation Mm -hmm. um, completely out of the nest. And um, 
I just think you're going to have more of a shock, more whiplash than you think. It's just a, you're just asking a couple of guys, and we're just we're just talking. By the way, we don't think there's anything. Neither one of us think there's anything wrong with your idea. No. Uh, or your ability to do it. You have the luxury. I, I just want you to think through it and go. Well, is there? Can we slow this down just a little bit? Turn up the heat on the tra- what we're transitioning to, not from. Yes. A little bit, and I think you'll get a better result. Yeah, because with the, the ships in the night thing isn't going to be resolved either way. This is his wife's got a crazy schedule, so if he he's going to see more of her apparently with this move. But there's other ways to do the homeschooling. There's other ways to do that. You don't have to be the homeschool teacher. Um, so I just I, I would ask you to do more research, look at every angle possible on how do we accomplish the kids being in the learning environment that you want, you doing something that you really, really enjoy, and getting to spend more time with the wife. Don't assume that this is the only way to do it. I think that's really what we're driving yeah, at. Yeah, but what a wonderful place to be. Fantastic. Uh, a, you've got the heart for it. Um, and, uh, B, the math in the household allows you to do this. And so absolutely on, um, on the way, you know, it's the way to go. No question about it. So, yeah, I just, I, there's, um, I, there's a stewardship thing for me on everything that, that overcoats my whole life. And so I often look at that and go, okay, I have this ability and i'm supposed to i have this potential i have this bandwidth and am i using that to its fullest potential or am i just letting it go dormant and escaping and and i i have a tendency to do the escape thing like everybody else does i have to stop and think about it but it's one of the things it's that whole concept that keeps me working i don't have to be here that's right financially but i'm here because uh, of I have the bandwidth, I have the ability to reach a whole bunch of people still. And, uh, and so I need to do that. I need to do that. I'm yeah. going to have a best, my best life because I did that. That's right. That, that's what I'm looking for. Hey, good question, man. Love it. Thank you for calling in. Real, real brain teaser. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. You can listen to all our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. Browse by topic or even sync clips to your friends. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, best-selling author of the book Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host today as we talk about your work, your money, your relationships, and your life. It's what we do right here on The Ramsey Show. Again, open phones at 888-825-5225. Danica is with us in Canada. Hi, Danica. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. I can. How are you? Great. How can we help? Okay. So I just finished funding my three to six month emergency fund. Way to go. Um, I don't. Thank you. I don't have a house. um, So I'm going to start saving for a down payment, but I'm a little unsure because Right now in Ontario, we have like a housing affordability crisis. <laughs> um, it's really expensive. Like a condo of like one bedroom is maybe minimum 350000 mm-hmm. So I'm torn between do I like save up a down payment until just like be patient, have enough money until I can buy something? Or is it better to continue renting and then put that money in an investment? I'm not really sure where, where I should go with that one. 
How old are you? I'm 35. Okay, cool. Um, and how long have you been in, in that city? I've lived, um, well, my whole life pretty much. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Good. I live a little for like an hour away from where I grew up, but, mm-hmm. um, if I wanted something more affordable, I'd have to move probably three or four hours away. Okay. So. Right. Well, that's an untenable commute, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. We're not, we're not doing that. So that's, that's off the table. You'd have to change jobs if you did that. Um, and Mm -hmm. which is a possibility. I mean, that's okay. If you live in an area you simply can't afford to buy in ever, then that Mm -hmm. means you can't afford to live there. You need to be able to buy a home at some point in your, in your process. There's nothing on fire. Uh, but when you're able to save up a good down payment and able to make a purchase, I would go ahead and make the purchase. Yeah. Um, but Mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't take you decades uh, it, it should be a matter of, um, you know, you're out of debt. You don't have anything to do except use your income now to get your emergency fund to save for your down payment. And I just would do that and then go ahead and make the purchase and put down the roots. Um, doubtful that the real estate's coming down. So, um, you know, you want to do, you want to get in on the ride rather than just watch other people ride. It's uh, you will end up with FOMO. <laughs> That's true. You know, Dave, I, I hear just a tinge of, intimidation or maybe I don't know if I can actually do it. And I, I just want, Danica, I just want you to hear me say the same thing in you that got you out of debt, that, that got the emergency fund is going to allow you to put a really nice down payment down. It is doable. Yeah. You got to be patient. Yeah. And dang it, that's hard, isn't it? It's yeah, it really is. hard. Especially when it's a housing thing and the housing prices seem to be go up by the minute uh, in an area that's expensive yeah. already and that kind of stuff. But yeah, you'll just end up taking your time and shopping around and finding the bargain and you know, you, you'll, you know, the market will calm down a little bit in the meantime, and that'll be good for you as well. And you'll get in there. Yep. You, you're going to get in the housing market and uh, just don't get in and over your head and 15 year fixed rate where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take home pay and you'll be in good shape. Joshua's in Denver. Hey, Joshua, what's up? Hey, Dave. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I'm a huge fan. It's an honor to speak with you today. You too. How can we help? Um, okay, so um, I had a car loan in 2017. It was repossessed almost immediately because I couldn't afford it. Um, my credit report says that a little over $7,500 was charged off in 2019. Uh, finally got them on my debt snowball, and when I called, uh, they said that they wrote it off for just over $4,500, and that I'll get uh, a 1099 in the mail this February. Um, the man from Wells Fargo said that uh, I don't owe them the debt. Does the 1099 actually replace the debt, or should I be on the lookout for the other 3000 popping up somewhere? 1099 hasn't got anything to do with anything. That's just a collector okay. technique. Okay, Debt that is uh, forgiven is taxable, and you're supposed to get a 1099 on it. Is he saying they are forgiving the debt? If he's saying that, yes. he needs to send you a note that says that. Um, he, he says that I no longer owe Wells Fargo. That's great. Send me a note that says that. And did they sell the okay. debt to someone else? Um, no, I, I asked them where the debt was. Um, if they did, he, he's not telling me. I asked him where the debt was. He said um, the only thing that I'll get is a 1099 with uh, 45 27 total on it. And um, okay. as far as Wells Fargo knows, I don't owe them the debt. Yeah. Well, that's... That's absolute hogwash, okay? Okay. Um, it sounded you're, like it. Well, you're probably just dealing with a lazy guy on the other end of the phone. Now, here's what's happened, okay? A company can write a debt off, meaning they give up on collecting it, and they write the bad debt off as a business expense, at which point okay. they can send you a 1099. That is a tax thing. They know they, they want to write it off as a bad debt and take the taxes, take the deduction on the taxes for the bad debt, and they want to send you the 1099, which means you owe taxes on $4,500. And that is all proper and correct. That has nothing to do with whether you still owe the debt. Okay. If they want to forgive the debt, I want them to send me a letter or an email at least saying that this account is has a zero balance, nothing is owed. So that some moron later, they because what they'll do is, Wells Fargo's classically incompetent. They're a massive company, and they are full of fools. Just full. They pack the whole bank full of them. 
okay? <laughs> and you got a hold of one of them. So the, what they'll do is they'll batch all these bad debts on these repo, uh, repo deficits in a package, and they'll sell them to a debt buyer for pennies on the dollar who will then come and try to collect from you. And you will go, oh, no, they said I didn't owe it. And they say, oh, well, you do owe it because you don't have any proof in writing that you don't owe it. You had an idiot in a cubicle on the phone tell you that. You got to get them back on the phone and get it in writing, and you got to hound them until you get it in writing. If they send it to okay, you in it. writing, I don't care if it's an email, that this account has been completely written off. You owe nothing. We've given up. You have a zero balance. There will be no forward collection attempts. Whatever it says along those lines, settled in full, whatever, forgiven in full. I don't care what they call it, but something along that language. You following me? Got it. Um, so I, I, I get that in writing and then pay the taxes and then it's done? Yep. Okay, awesome. But Appreciate I doubt it. that's going to happen because okay. I think they still have sold this bad debt to somebody for a nickel on the dollar who's going to show up on your doorstep wanting the dead gum money for the whole okay, thing, by it. the way. But the 10, because the 1099 is not a legal release from the debt. It's simply them saying, we want to write this off as a bad business expense, and we're going to put the taxes over on you. That's all it is, a tax move. And generally speaking, it's also a collector's move. But yeah, you're dealing with Wells Fargo. God help you. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. launch week for the baby steps millionaires book it comes out officially tomorrow i will be shipped to you and you can order until midnight tonight at ramseysolutions.com and still get all of the goodies thrown in all the goodies being the audiobook the ebook the legacy journey audiobook and ebook and several other items as well over a hundred dollars worth of things and the book is only twenty dollars if you order by midnight tonight the pre-order will help you get that done today RamseySolutions.com. Hit the store. Also, while you're there, uh, join the uh, 100,000 folks uh, online and the 1,500, 1,600 people in the auditorium that will be viewing our free live stream event called Building Wealth in 2022. It will be Thursday night. It is a live stream on Thursday night. January the 13th, this coming Thursday, Rachel Cruz, George Camel, and I are going to be talking about how to build wealth in the year 2022. We are going to talk about how to look out for scams, how to look out for things that don't work, and how to identify the things that do work. We're going to walk you through the real story on all this stuff you're hearing about in the news, all this stuff you're hearing about in social media, and all these broke people with an opinion about getting rich. And we're going to talk you through exactly how to do it. This coming Thursday, it is a free live stream, but you need to pre-register. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash wealth and pre-sign, and we will make sure you are hooked up with everything you need. You got to love it, man, oh, man, oh, man. Building Wealth 2022, this Thursday, RamseySolutions.com slash wealth. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promo they run every month. You'll 
save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Dave, today's question comes from Walker in Kentucky. He writes, I'm a 20-year-old college junior majoring in political science. I was recently referred to a logistics brokering company for a full-time job. I completed the hiring process and was offered a $40,000 a year job with options for full benefits and an uncapped commission plan. On average, employees make $95,000 annually after two to three years with the top 20% of employees making a little under double that. I have to choose between school and this career. The obvious choice is to take the job, but I don't want to disappoint my father by dropping out of college. I don't plan to use my degree if I were to graduate anyway, but I'm conflicted. Any advice? Well, a couple things here. Number one, you don't have to choose between this job um, and finishing your degree. I think you don't have to. You've got a, looks like a really good financial opportunity in front of you. Uh, but you don't have to. And I think what you got to first weigh in on is the conversation with your dad. You clearly want to honor your father. Uh, you don't want to disappoint him. So this is a conversation on how important it is that you finish college so as to not disappoint your father. Because, you know, you could disappoint him by making a good financial decision or you could resent him if you don't take this opportunity um, and go to school and then you resent him. And I, I really get worried about resentment. Um, and, and so I would sit down with dad and, and I would try to meet in the middle. And if your dad thinks it's important and you don't want to hurt the relationship, you could finish school and get your degree online while you're working full time. I mean, we see this with athletes all the time. They'll go pro and they finish their degree and you can do the same thing. So I think you have to decide what do I want to do? What do I think is right based on what my father's expectations are, my relationship with my father? And then I've got a really good financial opportunity. But I think it's a false narrative that you have to choose this job and no degree because if the degree is important to you and your dad you can finish the degree yeah and i think you finish the degree but you do it for yourself um yeah i would rather that than do it i don't i don't think i think doing things to that are tough for someone else uh you know when you set goals the goals need to be your goals not somebody else's Mm -hmm. and right now your dad has a goal for you to graduate from college you don't have that as a goal now, is a college degree a good thing? Sure, it's a good thing. Is it a, a ticket to success? Nope. Nope. We got a whole bunch of broke people disillusioned in America right now because they got degrees in left-handed puppetry, and they owe $200,000 to freaking Navient, and uh, they're being abused by their own government, and it's a mess out there, people. Have you noticed? Yeah, so, you know, you don't want to be joining that mess, so don't do this for your dad. But do it for yourself. I'm with Ken. I think you take the job and you finish your career, finish your degree at night and, and weekends and whatever else, and you figure out another way to do it. Uh, we did this, okay? Yeah. Sharon and I got married. Um, we were so broke we couldn't pay attention. I mean, we didn't have two nickels to rub together. I got a job making big money, $18,000 a year. <laughs> 1500 bucks a month. Hey, it's no big money. need to brag, Dave. Big money in 1982. Just shut up, <laughs> all right? I was making big money. <laughs> and they were actually going to pay me even, like, no matter what happened, as long as I went to work and stuff. Oh, wow. I've been on straight commission my whole life. I didn't, never had a job where they just oh, paid Oh, that you. is true. Yeah. So I was just, I was so thrilled. And none of my buddies even hardly got jobs that year. It was a tough year in the economy. So I get this job, and it's in Nashville, so we got to move to Nashville. Well, Sharon has, like, five classes left to finish her degree oh so i marry her take her away from the university to go get a job so we could eat and um her dad didn't wasn't real thrilled with all yeah, that yeah can not, you imagine yeah. number one i was involved so yeah i think that, it was more of that the than the degree but, dave but yeah. that's okay but I, I, to my credit, I did promise him. I said, I, she will get her degree. We've just yeah. got to figure out a way to do it. Let us get over to Nashville and get landed, oh. and we'll figure it out. And we couldn't figure it out. I mean, she took a job. I took a job, and we never got it back around to it for about two years, three years. So the first baby comes, and we get this idea that Sharon's going to uh, work her degree now that, now that we've got a baby. So we looked at another college locally to transfer the credits to from University of Tennessee in East Tennessee and couldn't. They, they transferred, but it would take another year to finish. And it was just, she only missed like four classes yeah. to graduate. So we figured out she could take the four classes in summer session in the, those little short cram course sessions. Oh, like yeah. Six weeks long. So she drove to Knoxville wow. six weeks in a row 
and stayed with my parents and left my baby in a daycare wow. and went to class for four weeks in a row or six weeks in a row to finish those four stupid classes to get that stupid degree. But she got it. And we cried. She, she'd leave. I'd cry. She'd cry. It was awful. It was horrible six weeks. Right. Absolutely horrible. But we were 20-something. I mean, you know, we didn't have anything. Right. So she comes back. She's got her degree, by God. But so why'd she do that? She Really, because it was a good thing to – you don't be that close and not finish. All right. I mean, four classes. Come on. No, you know, I, not I, yeah, finish I, I with it. four classes. So even I got that as dumb as I am, you know. <laughs> and uh, and she wanted to do it, but right. I pro- but also I promised her dad it meant a lot that's, to him. That's the point. And I, I made thinking. a promise, but I really we weren't doing it only because of no, that. No, not at all. We were doing it because it felt like sure. the right thing to do, and you're that close to the finish line, right. and you can pay a price on the short term here. And I'm glad it was a rough six yes. weeks. It was 40 years ago. It's tough, but it was a rough six weeks. And uh, uh, but it was worth it. And yeah, you do that. You you take the night classes. You take some weekends. Yeah. You take some six weeks of cram courses. You take your vacation time. You use it to he go to can class. Get it done. And you finish this stinking degree. Now, Dave, this you and I. I don't know that we agree on this, but I was answering the question to him personally. Once I realized that I wouldn't need the degree, I wouldn't go back. I'd just have a hard conversation with my parents and cast some vision on it. But that's not what he asked. I want him to sit with his dad. He needs to determine how big of a deal it is to make his dad happy. I personally, on the issue, if college is not the only way or the best way to do the career you want, then I say forget it. But I'm a little bit out there on that one. But it's also a practical guide. I mean, that's my litmus test, those two questions. Well, I think we need to go more that way than the way we've gone, where all college is good no matter what it is and well, no matter what it costs. that's a total marketing lot. That's just absolute hogwash. Yeah, same people and that's that the way you. that's the way the culture is. Moved. So yeah. I'm more on your team. Yeah. Um, he can be very successful without a college degree. Yes. But, but he if can he's also in finish. his junior year. He can finish. His junior year, yeah, it's okay. Knock it out. Absolutely, you can you can do both. It's not it's not as fatalistic as either or. This is the Ramsey Show. Thanks, America. We're glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. It is a free call. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Chris is with us in Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, Dave, how are you? Thanks for taking my call, and thank you for fixing stupid, and stupid is me. So thank you for that. <laughs> well, we've all been there, brother. What's up? Yes, sir. So um, a tragedy has put me in a position to buy a house that I know I can't afford with, you know, um, 20% down with a fourth or a mortgage being a fourth of my income. So right now I'm 21. Um, I make 74000 a year. Um, next year that'll go up to 90000 I have $80,000 saved. Um, this house is worth 294,000. I'll be buying it for 294,000. It's worth about 440,000. So I'm wondering, do I just put down the 20%, which is 58,000, or do I kind of go more aggressive and wipe out my savings with why I guess accept a thousand dollars and get my mortgage as low as possible. I do want to do a 15 year. I don't want to go 30. Um, but what do you do for a that. living? I work um, in procurement and pretty much government contracts um, for a national laboratory. Mm. Okay, you, I, I missed the part where a tragedy helped you. I don't understand. Okay, so well, no, it didn't help me by no means. 
Um, my uncle passed away five oh. months ago, um, or five months ago yesterday. And so I'm kind of the only one in the position to buy a house and my, my family wants to keep it in. And by no means is it forced. I've been taking care of the house for a couple months and I absolutely love it. Um, I just don't, I, I don't. So the family wants to living. sell you a house that's valued at 440 for 300. For yes, sir, two ninety four. Okay, where did the two ninety four come from? That is what my uncle owed on the house, so that's that's what they're selling it for. Okay, why? Because they wanted to stay in the family that badly. Um, yes, sir. Is there an obligation on your part to never sell it? Um, no. Um, is it on family land? I don't think so. It is not on family land, no, sir. Okay. So what happens if you uh, get married and your new wife doesn't want it and you sell it? Is everybody in the family mad at um, you? That is a possibility. However, I don't think so. Um, I think realistically my mom would actually probably downsize and get into it. Um, you know, they, they're they very emotional. And they're holding on to just about everything. Um, yeah. And she had made a comment if I can't get into the house. I'll it, pass. Yeah. You, this is a trap. Yep. Your family's your however, family's your family's whacked. This is a trap. Are, however, this is a trap. You're 21 years old. This is a trap. You're going to regret this because of all not because of the math, but because of all the emotions tied to it. You're going to get painted into the corner and you're going to get paint on your feet. Somebody's going to be pissed at you when you try to do something nice and you strain your butt off at 21 to do it. Well, my goal, so I've been living here since a month after it, taking care of it. And at first, you know, I felt pressured. But after these couple months, I know you're going to feel pressure when you want to sell it. And somebody wants to you to buy wants to buy it from you at a deal. Well, I don't I don't necessarily know if I want to sell it. My goal is to pay it. off. No, you're going to want to sell it someday. And when you do, somebody's going to be pissed if you don't give them a deal. Inside the family. Yes, sir. There's that expectation on this. There is. You know I'm right. No, I. I They're going to bring up the fact that, that they that gave that you a good deal. Chris, let me ask you this: <laughs> if if your uncle had not passed away and this house situation didn't come your way, would you be looking to buy a two hundred ninety four thousand dollar house if this hadn't happened right now? Well, I, when when he passed, I was in a totally different position. Like I said, I was stupid, and then I found I found Dave. Five months ago, I was about sixty thousand dollars in debt. I sold everything, got myself a hoop deep, paid off my student loans. Now I'm completely debt free with eighty thousand. Who, who are the uh, who are the heirs? Your mom um, and who else? My mom and my aunt. My mom and her sister. Okay. Uh, they have to write you a detailed letter that says you are free to do with this house anything you want, anytime you want, without asking anyone's permission. You are not obligated to give them first right of refusal. You are not obligated to give your cousin a deal, your cousin's dog a deal. You're not obligated to do nothing. If you buy this house, it is yours to do with as you dadgum well please forever and ever, and no one is allowed to say a peep about it. That needs to be in a letter. I agree with that 100%. But I I don't think they can do that. Because you've already got it. My mom will move down into it if I want to move. You've already got all these backup plans and all these side angled things, and that's what's scaring me here. Yep. I mean, I say that. I mean, they they live in a house. All of us have moved out. That's the only reason why she would. I, uh, but but they're very emotional people. You just said too. I heard they, you. Yes. They, you've they already let too much escape people. out of your mouth <laughs> yeah. to backtrack now. <laughs> no, no. I, yeah, I'm not trying to backtrack. Uh, or, However, sure you if, are. You got used to if, the pressure. You admitted you got used to the pressure. Initially, there was pressure, and I don't think you would have been in the market for a house this expensive at this age. You're 21. You're in great shape. Hey, you're listen, here, here's, the, here's the way I want this laid out. If you keep it a year and sell it and make $500,000 profit, nobody says beep. Yes, sir. And if that is the case, then do, do the deal. Then do the deal. Yeah. Yeah, you can do the deal. And put put I, everything down but an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, not everything but $1,000. So 
So everything but okay. everything so, but fifteen thousand dollars. And then if and you get in trouble, do not hang on to this house in the name of family emotion. You sell it. Yes, sir. Sell it. If you get now, in trouble, it it's a stupid 15? house. Is it an issue going 15 years? Cause no, put it on a 15-year fixed about. rate. Put down $65,000. Keep 15000 in your account. But you and your mama and your aunt all better be emotionally prepared to cut this thing loose because you are getting into an emotional trap, and I'm afraid the trap is going to destroy you, not the deal. Okay. Yes, you hear sir. my concern loud and clear? No, I do, and I... I I thought about that, and that, that is an issue. Yeah, um, I, I mean, the number of times, man, in 30 years that I have talked to wonderful people like you and your mom, where your aunt gets so pissed off she can't breathe because Jim Bob, her third cousin, didn't get a deal on the house after she gave you a deal on the house, and it was an unwritten set of assumptions. And you know what an assumption makes everybody. That's what happens. Sure. And, and you got to have you got to have real clear on that in writing. It's not a legal binding contract, but it's them saying out loud, mm -hmm. "You are free to sell this house twenty minutes after you buy it and make a profit, and nobody gonna say beep." And Chris, yes, Chris, if you don't have that freedom yourself emotionally, and they won't give it to you emotionally and relationally. Please, yes. walk. That's right. Because Chris needs to, you okay. need to emotionally prepare yourself that you're not going to get this letter. I'm with Dave. If I was, I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can either. I don't think you're going to get the letter. So you got to be prepared for that. Yeah, I think because I think they're going to want to hold it over your head. This is a game these people play, man. And it's just I can smell it, man. There's crazy in every family, and it takes all kinds of different forms. Be careful. And I'm not saying your mama's crazy. I didn't call your mama crazy. Don't get mad at me. Well. But I said it could be. I just, <laughs> could be the ant, and it could be Jim Bob, and it could be Jim Bob's blue tick hound. I don't know. But somebody in that pile is going to cause a mess. I'm just saying. And I've just, man, I've spent so much time in rooms with people that everybody's mad, and, and it has nothing to do with the financial transaction. It has everything to do with everybody's set of assumptions. And that's a real, you're 21, man. you got a big, wonderful life ahead of you. Don't screw it up with your uncle's house. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 15, 29, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Abraham Lincoln says, nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. Well, that's true. Give him money, give him power. Yeah. So uh, those are two things that expand, magnify what is already there. Nice. Anthony's with us in San Antonio. Hey, Anthony, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, currently, actually sitting in a bit of a predicament, um, wondering if it's really a good idea to sell our home in order to pay off debt. Uh, do you like the house? We do. <laughs> we do like it. Um, okay. What's the problem? We, How much debt have you got? Well, uh, everything w without the house, obviously, uh, about 115000 What do you make at your household income? Household is about 120 Okay. What is What kind of debt is the 115 What's it on? Uh, two vehicles. What are they? Um, How much are they? Um, my truck is about 34 and my wife's vehicle is about 20 mm -hmm. 22 I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and you owe what on the house? Uh. 
two fifteen. Okay, and what's it worth? Um, in this market currently, I can probably anywhere between three thirty and three sixty. Okay. All right. So it doesn't even get you completely out of debt. Not completely. Um, depending on how I depending on how I sell it, yes. How long have you been working to get out of debt? Oh gosh, <laughs> um, probably only about a few months now. I've only started listening to you a few months ago. Cool. How much have you paid off so far? Uh, about what was it? About probably about four. It's about four and a half. Thousand? Yeah. Four thousand dollars in how many months? Uh, probably about uh, probably about six weeks. Two months at the most. Okay. All right. Well, that sucks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're not making much progress. No. Okay. Is that the reason, the fact you kind of are, are uh, kind of stopped up here, that you're thinking of selling the house? Yeah, we're, we're, kind of, we're living paycheck to paycheck um, and have been for, for probably at least a year now, yeah. um, just paying yeah. ourselves with the debt. Okay. Uh, the idea what's, your is wife, to, what's your wife saying about all this? She, she's on board. On board um, with what? Go out with selling the house and uh, uh, paying off debt and then spending another couple of years just kind of saving up and so you're having a pretty good yeah. discussion about the money problems then without yeah, without trying correct. to kill each other good good that's good that's a good basis to move forward that's for sure um well uh, the way i answer questions on this show is what i would do it, it, unless you don't like the house and you said you do like it um then moving is very expensive emotionally financially disruptive to everything else in your life it takes up bandwidth it's exhausting i'd rather have a root canal um you know moving is just a pain in the butt and so uh i'll sell almost anything pretty quick when we start to get out of debt process but the house unless you don't like it anyway is something i sell i suggest you sell very slowly so if i were in your shoes what i would do i'm going to put you guys into ramsey plus for a year i'm going to pay for it and let you get into financial peace university and I want you to start working the system hard. No eating out unless you're, uh, you don't need to see the inside of a restaurant unless you're working there. No more vacations, no more nothing. Beans and rice, rice and beans. You are broke people that make $120,000 a year, and you need to start acting like broke people. And you haven't been. I know because you suck at how much debt you've paid off. You haven't made any progress because you've not had any intensity yet. You need to crank up the intensity about 17 notches. I think before I sold my house, I'd sell these two cars. Yeah, I, I'd love to know, Dave. Uh, I'm, I'm getting rid of both cars. What, how much is the truck worth? No, it's worth more than thirty-four. It has to be in today's yeah, market. It, I could probably I could probably walk away with about a thousand dollars. Yeah, I go buy me a car with that or a truck with that, and I yes. get rid I get rid of both these car payments before I got rid of my house. Yeah. You can, you can repurchase and trade cars a whole lot cheaper and yep. easier than you can houses. And there's some margin, by the way, to start budgeting with. Yeah. You, Ramsey Plus. you dump 50000 you dumped half the dadgum debt. Yeah. And the, so I'm yeah. selling both cars, and I'm going to work my butt off on a uh, beans and rice, scorched yeah. earth plan for six months. And I'll bet you you don't need to sell your house then. I agree. Now's the time to sell those used cars. Yeah. You want to talk about taking some stress off of you. Good time to sell a house, too. But yeah. I'd sell cars before I sold a house. I agree with that. Uh, I can get, you can get another car. It's just a stupid car. And a stupid house, too. You can get another stupid house. But everything's stupid Less today. emotional issues. Everything's stupid today. But it's just, <laughs> you, don't, you know, you don't have to move. Yeah, I agree. You know, you just, you just get the stuff out of the glove box. That's all you got to do. This I is mean, a massive know. move, selling those cars. You're talking it's about $50,000. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd list those things tonight. 56000 bucks out of 115 It is half. Bad gum, it is half. Yeah, and then let's just look at the monthly there. I mean, if they're carrying seven hundred dollars, seven fifty, no, that's eight hundred a month, twelve hundred bucks, twelve hundred bucks. Oh, see, I can't even them. compute yeah. that, Dave. Yeah, twelve hundred bucks. Easy, easy. <laughs> okay, well, there's your margin. That taking the stress level down. Big and then time. just knock the rest out of, knock the snot out of that other fifty six thousand, making one hundred and twenty. You're debt free in eighteen months. Yeah. And you're sitting there with no payment in the world in eighteen months, and you save up very quickly and pay cash for a car. Ta da. Yeah. I agree. You know, and um, it's just a it's just a truck, man. Really. Yeah. I, mean, I, I like my truck, but it, I don't I don't like it more than a house. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it more than moving. You know. That's the truth. That yeah. Just I love that you pointed that out. Now, it's not just the expense. 
uh, the financial ex- expense. It's bandwidth. The nesting that takes place with the wife. I know she's on board, but that's a major disruption and not necessary in this case. Figuring out where to put the dishes. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Miguel is with us. Miguel is in Redding, Pennsylvania. Miguel, I'm short on time. Uh, give us a quick question. Hey, Dave. Um, uh, so I'm a, I'm a full-time Uber driver, and uh, I'm just uh, calling uh, because uh, from a moral perspective, um, uh, I've been tracking my own miles uh, outside of what the Uber uh, tells me I'm driving when I'm online. And because I drive about an hour away, um, I, it, for tax purposes, it ends up breaking even. Um, uh this isn't a problem for this past tax year. It's going to be a problem for next tax year when I'm I actually start um, start investing for retirement. So breaking even. You mean get, your uh, the miles you compute and the miles the app computes are breaking are the same? Is that what you mean by breaking even? Uh, yes, with uh, the the standard uh, mile deduction from uh, the IRS. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, either one then is fine to use. You just got to be able to prove it in the event of an audit, and you have to feel morally correct about it. And you're telling me it's the same number, so why wouldn't it be? Uh, well, basically, uh, when I say breaking even, that means uh, there's there's no profit. When I re- oh, that's I what I asked. I asked if you were had the same number of miles with your calculation or Uber's calculation, and you said, "Oh no, yes, no, no, it's no, not what you meant by breaking." Uh, you mean you're not making any the, money the, driving the Uber? Yeah, uh, that's uh, according to if I track my own miles, because uh, it doesn't include uh, the Uber app doesn't include the, the actual miles that I drive. Well, to guess what? Get that means you're city. not making any money. That's what that means. Really? Because the IRS didn't come up with that. I mean, they're not very good at a lot of things, but that mileage number is fairly accurate. It's costing you that what the IRS is allowing you to deduct. That's a real cost. It's a cost in loss value in the car. It's a cost in extra maintenance on the car. It's a cost in fuel on the car, wear and tear on the car. That's where mileage deduction comes from. And so you really are having those real expenses. So you really are really breaking even. It's not necessarily breaking even the cash out of your pocket because you had not had to buy tires yet because you wore them out. But when you put the tires back in and change the oil and the repairs that are adding to it with the wear and tear on the car and the loss of value when you get ready to sell the car, you really are breaking even because you're driving too far in and your Uber deal's not making sense. So probably need to find something else to do. But practically speaking on his question, you should accurately log all those miles. Yes. Uber's giving you one number, but if you can prove the other mileage, yes, you should do that. You need to. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming the code allows you to book driving in to start driving. Yeah. Which is what you're saying. And I'm not sure it does. But if, I don't know what the IRS code allows. But either way, the bottom line is, is you're spending that money and you're breaking even, uh, really, not just in taxes. So puts that hour in the books. Thanks, Ken Coleman. Thank you, sir. Thanks to James Childs and Kelly in the booth. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.